Hello, everybody. Welcome to the I Am IT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan. As ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back. We are continuing with our Microsoft Cloud VDI series. Um, however, we are now moving on to the, the final topic, really. Um, we've covered DevBox. We've covered Windows 365 or Cloud PC, whatever you want to call it. And now we're actually moving on to Azure Virtual Desktop. So this is really where it all started from a cloud VDI perspective. Um, I don't it in reverse order. You think about it, DevBox as the last sort of a Microsoft Cloud VDI product solution to be released. And then it was Windows 365 before that. And then Azure Virtual Desktop is, a, well, Windows um, Virtual Desktop is where it all, uh, WVD is where it all started. And then they, they rebranded to AVD. So today we're going to start talking about that. As you can see, my office is coming along nicely. I'm starting to get things in my office. And you probably see oh, that, that other side, oh, that's how they go. You see the boomerang uh, about somewhere around there on the shelf. You see my, my, my signed shirt and the clocks as well. Any questions about my office, please do drop me a comment. I'll be happy to answer those. Without further ado, let's get started with this episode. So we are on the Microsoft Cloud VDI topic, as I mentioned. This is a whole series of Cloud VDI. And today it's going to be the introduction, right? Um, so we'll first all talk about what is AVD. We're going to talk about some of the key capabilities. And then uh, we'll just give an overview of the AVD portal because we are actually going to um, start doing some labs of de deploying AVD, the VMs, images, and stuff like that as well. Um, so hopefully, again, this is—I um, suppose it's—it's not—it's not, it's not a very deep dive technical. This is how you do things, you know. But it's kind of trying to the whole part of this season, trying to show the differences between the three different solutions that Microsoft have for VDI at the moment. Um, so try and talk about use cases. You know, where does this sit? In, in the sort of, um, where does it sit for organizations and what type of organizations probably make use of it. Um, so first of all, let's talk about what is AVD for those who don't know. So Azure Virtual Desktop, AVD stands for Azure Virtual Desktop. Uh, so it's a desktop and app virtualization service and it runs on, on the Azure cloud. Uh, and some of its sort of key elements are it delivers a full Windows experience with Windows 11 or, or Windows 10 or even Windows Server if you, if you want to go that way. Uh, it uses um, single, uh, both single session uh, to assign device to a single user or, and this is probably the key difference between it and the other solutions within Microsoft Cloud VDI, uh, it uses multi-session for scalability as well. So it's the only uh, multi-session solution out there for Microsoft Cloud. I'm going to focus on Microsoft Cloud because there are other vendors obviously that do um, VDI, but let's talk about Microsoft for now. It offers a full desktop or remote app to deliver individual apps, and we're going to be looking at that as we go further on in this uh, in this video in this series. Uh, and it presents Microsoft 365 apps as well for enterprise and optimize to, to run in like a multi-session virtual scenarios. Um, and that's the key, you know, being able to share usage of applications with you know multiple users um, on like a like a single compute, essentially a single VM. You can also install, install a line of business or sort of custom apps that you can run from, from anywhere, including apps in sort of formats of Windows 32, MS, MSIX, and Apex as well. Again, we'll be looking at some of those as we go further on in this series. Um, so let's continue talking about what, you know, so much to AVD. So let's just continue to talk about what it is as well. So it allows you to deliver software as a service, so SaaS, for external usage as well. Um, and it, it really replaces the the historic, I call it historic legacy remote desktop service, RDS deployment. If you remember, you know, for those in old money, let's say, you know, on premises solutions like remote desktop services, uh, where you had uh, essentially you, you built a basically half through Hyper V as well. You built this RDS environment with different server roles, and uh, like the broker role, or, you know, the the stuff like that. You bought like a farm, essentially built a, a VDI farm. And then you essentially published apps and you published desktops for users to use. Um, you can manage desktops and apps from, from different Windows and Windows Server operating systems with a unified management experience as well. We're going to look at some of the sort of management experience UI um, at the end in the demo of this video, specific video. Um, it allows you to host desktops and apps uh, on premises in a sort of hybrid configuration using Azure Local. Um, so Azure Local is, is what used to be um, Azure Stack, essentially, but yeah, I've done a whole series on Azure, Azure Stack as well, so which is now Azure Local. So essentially, that lets you deploy all those sort of Azure, Azure features and your services uh, on premises in your data center. And, and AVD is one of those services you can use as your local. 
So some of those key capabilities um, include being able to create a full desktop virtualization environment in your Azure subscription without running any sort of gateway server. So one of the key elements, again, of AVD, we're going to be looking at this as well as the series goes on, is how it's secure by design. So all those sort of server roles I mentioned a minute ago, like um, the, the broker role, the gateway role, they're all hosted by Microsoft, but it's their responsibility. So it's almost like the, the PaaS services where, and that's what AVD is, it's a mixture of PaaS and IaaS. And the, the sort of server roles and, and, and those um, gateway servers, they're part of the PaaS element that Microsoft hosts and you don't get to see or you don't get to, to you know, so they're very secure. You've also got flexible configurations as well. These are going to accommodate any sort of diverse workloads and we will be looking into those diverse workloads as well as we go along in this series. You can bring your own image for production workloads or for sort of test uh, from your Azure gallery as well. And we'll be looking at how you can create those images and how you can manage those as well. And also you can reduce costs with your sort of pool multi-session resources. Uh, you know, with the new Windows 11 and Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session capability, so that's an OS version, uh, exclusive to AVD as well, to, you know, and, and all sort of Windows Server. You can greatly reduce the number of virtual machines and operating system overhead uh, while still sort of providing the same sort of resources to users. So from a compute perspective and a usage perspective, the user shouldn't see any different. Uh, so continuing, you know, again, there's a lot of capabilities, but we're just doing a bit of a high overview in this in this episode, but we're going to go deeper into a lot of these as we go along. It provides uh, individual ownership through personal persistent desktops, which we'll be looking at. You can automatically increase or decrease capacity based on sort of the time of day, specific days of the week, or uh, sort of as demand sort of changes with auto scaling. Hey, and this can help you manage costs. Again, we're going to look at auto scaling as we go along in this series as well. You can deploy and manage virtual desktop and applications through different methods. So you can use the Azure portal, Azure CLI, Azure PowerShell, REST APIs as well. And these can all help you create and configure host pool, application groups, workspaces, you know, assign users and publish resources. You can also use you know, things like Terraform to, to automate that provisioning process. Publish a full desktop or individual applications as well from a single host pool. You can create individual application groups for different sets of users or even assign users to, to multiple application groups to reduce the number of images you have as well. So again, very, very powerful, some of the sort of key capabilities. And I just want to finish off on this key capabilities topic before we move into the demo, give you an overview of the ABD portal. As you manage your environment, you can use built-in sort of delegated access to assign roles and collect diagnostics to understand various configuration uh, configurations are user errors as well. You get key insights and metrics about your environment and use uh, sort of uh, use, users by connecting it to your know, sort of uh, AVD insights. And again, with it being hosted in Azure Cloud, you just get all those cool capabilities that you get with whole, you know all those sort of additional integrated services like your monitors, your backup, all that sort of stuff. You get you get access to all that and you can integrate it with all, all those services as well. Uh, and finally, only, you only manage the image and virtual machines you, you use for the sessions in your Azure subscription, not the infrastructure. So you don't need to personally manage the supporting infrastructure roles, such as the gateway or broker, um, like you do remote desktop services. I mentioned that already um, about the sort of server roles that are hosted, and that's the sort of the PaaS element of, um, of AVD. Okay, so we're going to jump in the demo now, and I'm just going to give you a bit of an overview of the sort of UI of AVD and Azure Virtual Desktop. Uh, within the Azure portal. So let's jump into the demo. Okay, so you can get, if you log into Azure, you can actually just type in AVD at the top and um, it'll take you to essentially the virtual desktop solution. Um, so this is, I've got a blank page when it comes to AVD. I'm not assigned, I've, I've, I've not created any um, multi-session hospitals. I've got one um, personal hospital, which I, which I use personally for, for sort of stuff. Um, but again, with the overview page, you can go you can straight away, you've got create host, but you can look at different sort of help and learning. But we've got to manage, this is where you can sort of start managing the different things like host pools and applications, my single host pool that I've got there, application groups and workspaces. And we are going to be explaining a bit more about what these actually are um, for those people who, who, again, who, who are not sure. Um, and here's where we've got the app attached again for, for sort of, um, this is for application management. Um, and again, we'll explain exactly what app attaches as we go along. So we talk about automating and, and scaling in and out and up and down. This is where we've got scaling plans. Again, we're going to be working with scaling plans later on in one of the demos. Um, and here's where you can also manage the users. So again, we've got, got no one logged in at the moment, but this is where it tells you the sort of users and, and um, the, the different groups um, that you've got. And here's where we can actually manage our custom image templates as well. 
Um, again, we're going to be creating one of these and going through this in the demo as we go along. We mentioned about using, using Azure Insights, and here's where you can do sort of integration with that. Um, you can create workbooks, look at workbooks, and you can just really dig deep into the um, sort of uh, looking at log analytics and, and looking at the actual metrics of your hospital and, and how it's been used. And again, who's logging on, when they're logging on, any issues, etc. So again, all that, and I'm going to be looking at this as we go along. I just wanted to give you a bit of an overview right now. Um, you've got the diagnostic settings again of what sort of metrics to track. Um, and as we go down here, you've got some automation tasks and general sort of moving out with Azure. But as we as we go go back one and look at all these areas here of the managing, um, this is what we're going to be kind of looking at as we go in the demo, you know, creating host pools, creating the VMs, the images, um, the workspaces, all this sort of stuff we'll be looking at as we go along as well. So I just want to give a bit of an overview. Again, this is, you know, this is uh, the, the topic that I'm covering is, is very high level. I'm not going deep dive into ABD, Windows 365 or, or DevBox um, because the whole purpose of this, of this, this series I'm doing is to sort of clear up any, any again, working in the industry as, as I do, and that sort of architecture level, having the discussion with customers and clients around, you know, we've got three different solutions here that Microsoft have in Cloud VDM. Where, where are we meant to use them? What, what use cases fit which sort of solution? And by showing you the intricacies of each solution, you know, we've seen DevBox, we've seen Windows 365 or such Cloud PC, and now we're looking at AVD, hopefully it helps you understand where these fit within the industry. Um, and again, for you as an organization, how you can utilize them. You know, it's not, this is not, a, this is not something where you say it's, it's one of these three. You can, in, you can use all three of these within your, your operations and your, and your environment um, because they're all different. You all cover different use cases. They, they, there's very little over sort of lap when it comes to these solutions. And hopefully by the end of this series, you'll understand that. So again, thank you for everyone's support. We're, we're, we're kind of really running along nicely with the uh, amount of uh, so subscribers. I'm, I'm 30 odd K now, which is great. Got that 50 K target by the end of the year. And we're looking at, it's April right now. So still got a good, um, a good tear, about, about eight months to go yet. So hopefully cross fingers we get there. Uh, make sure you, you know you look at my LinkedIn in the description below and make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, so thank you for watching until next time. Goodbye.